Hi, this is your Cyber Path. We're the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job. I'm Kip Boyle, Wes Schreiner. I'm Wes Schreiner. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's Wes. And uh, we're experienced hiring managers of cybersecurity professionals. Um, so you probably know by this point, if you've, if you've watched this before, that uh, we do an audio only recording, which you, can, which you can get in your favorite podcast app. We also do a video recording and you can get that on, on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Your Cyber Path Podcast. Now, if you're watching the video today, you can tell that you know, we, don't, we don't have a slide deck uh, on the screen as we have done in the, uh, maybe was the last five or six episodes. Uh, today's a little different. As we told you in the last episode, we're going to share a story with you. And it's the story of what happened to Wes when he <laughs> was recently hunting for his own dream cybersecurity job. And um, I challenged him to share his journey with you because we're on this podcast dishing out a lot of wisdom and we're suggesting all these things that you ought to do. And so I was thinking, well, we should... We should tell our audience, you know, what uh, what we actually did, or in this case, what Wes actually did. If I ever go looking for my dream cybersecurity job, uh, I think Wes will be expecting me to dish on, <laughs> on what I did and what I didn't do. Uh, so I feel like we're giving wooden nickel advice, but I <laughs> think you can. Uh, I do want to call out that we're taking a break. We we introduced the placemat of what does a cybersecurity organization look like and what are the twenty three services of a common security service catalog. We introduced each of the four major domains, and now we're taking a break for just a minute to talk about the career uh, experience I've just had. And then we're gonna, I'm looking forward to the next episode where we're gonna jump in a whole lot deeper into uh, what are the different services and, and what are the jobs, what are the technologies, and what are the processes that we're most commonly gonna see in those spaces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you're able to join us. Yeah, uh, so, so we'll, get back. we'll get back to that. Oh, we'll be um, there. But this is such a timely topic, right? And we wanted to <laughs> tackle it before memories started to get a little stale and fade. <laughs> when you catch the fish, it's this big. <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you get to the car, it's this big. <laughs> and when you get home, it was this big. <laughs> I know how that works. Exactly. No, I want to tell you this, is, speaking of timely, uh, it's winter time on the farm. And in January in the farm, we plant trees. Well, you plant the fruit trees, right? Fruit goes dormant and it's a great time of year to put fruit in the ground. And so uh, this last week, uh, besides the 60 mile an hour blizzard that we had on Friday night, uh, <laughs> that was a rough one. Uh, the week <laughs> before that, I put 25 fruit trees in the ground. And those 25 fruit trees are, are gonna are gonna grow into amazing fruit in this on this property for the next 30 years, right? Uh, I say 30 years because sometimes it takes that long for some of these trees to develop to full maturity. Mm. Uh, in this area, we're gonna see excellent apples. We're gonna see pears. We're gonna see plums. We're gonna see the blueberries. Uh, although I already had 40 blueberries in the ground, so we're good there. Wow. Uh, uh, we had. We're gonna see some some grapes come out. We're gonna see some apricots and some peaches. So wow. that's kind of what what we're gonna see from that. Uh, maybe I, I planted a few trials with with some olives and figs and and mulberries, but uh, even some guava. But we'll see what happens with those. Those are those are more. Let's find out. What do you do with a mulberry? That's the one thing you said that I was like, I don't even know what. If somebody don't gave you me a go bushel, around a mulberry bush, isn't that what that, you do? It, so is that all it is? Playground equipment. It's fruit, man. It's food. This is a, it's a thing that you can make uh, excellent jams with. So uh, mm. yeah, it's a, uh, all right. I don't claim to know how to do all of this yet, but I can put plants in the ground. And one of the cool things about putting plants in the ground is not this year. Uh, this year, I've got to keep them alive and water them and, and, and protect them from the elements and, and the deer that will eat them to nothing. But three okay. years from now, I'll start to see some fruit. And five years from now, I'll be proud of that fruit. And 10 years from now, I'll have a, have a pretty healthy set of fruit trees, maybe even what you might call an orchard, right? Yeah. And so, uh, the, the thought for the day is, uh, from the farm, thought from the farm might be, uh, you don't plant 25 fruit trees unless you plan to stay a while. And I think that's true in our careers and in our jobs as well, right? Uh, let's think about how we can plant the fruit trees that are going to grow fruit for us for the rest of our careers. So I'm digging on right. it. That was our deep thought for today. <laughs> we'll see if and it gets any deeper around here than anything else. <laughs> and on that topic, right? Let's think about expectations. 
uh, my parents had the same job for 40 years. They did mm. the same work. They never changed jobs. They even didn't even change. My mom was a school teacher and she stayed at the same school. Wow. My dad was a civilian contractor for the, for the military and he never changed buildings as far as I know. Right. Wow. So uh, did you have a similar expectation or, or was your expectation different? Uh, gosh, you know, I, I, my, my parents, you know, their, their work history, um, well, they weren't college graduates, you know, they're blue collar workers, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and they worked hard and work was, you know, something that was valued very highly. Um, and so, you know, so I got, that was the work ethic that got instilled into me. Mm -hmm. However, uh, my parents encouraged me to go to college, which I did. And so, so my expectations for my career were different, right? In okay. terms of, you know, how often would I change jobs? What kinds of jobs would I pursue, you know, and, and what kinds of problems would I work on? That was all very different. And, uh, and so I, I felt like I had a clean sheet of paper in terms of making my own expectations nice. as, as far as that is concerned. Um, and I can, I can tell you that what I discovered is that there are certain problems I love to work on. And when those problems are put to rest and there are no more problems like that, Kip gets bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say it confuses my mother greatly when I change jobs. Mm. She doesn't understand why you wouldn't ever want to do that, right? And, and part of it is because I, I planted fruit trees here and, and it's time for me to plant some fruit trees in the next in the next opportunity, mm. right? Yep. So part of this is expectations. And that's really where we're going to transition here from what were the expectations you had growing up to what are the expectations you had in, in this time of transition that you find yourself in? You're in a time of waiting in this time of whatever it is, right? Are you grieving and mourning because you, you had something and it is gone? Is it a time of reset because you are in a new place and you've got to figure that out? Shoot, is it a time of identity? Because, oh my goodness, I was powerful, high, powerful, <laughs> falutin guy, right? But now I'm unemployed mouse, right? Is that, is that how you're going to be? Are you going to define yourself by your job? Are you going to define yourself by something else, right? Something bigger or something better uh, than just what we do for work? Yeah, I would put another, I would put another um, idea in there too, is, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's, it's tremendous relief that you are Andy. moving on to a new, a new uh, opportunity, as they say. And that's exciting too, right? <laughs> Isn't there a lot of anticipation and, and enthusiasm about the big new thing, right? I can't yeah. wait to tell you. And yeah. you got to sit on it for some period of time until all the papers are signed and I can go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of emotions, right? And I'm going to just list a few, right? And, and they, maybe these are the, the sour side of it, but uh, I'm going to list the anxiety and I'm going to list pride, right? Because my pride says, I don't want to tell people I'm not I'm not at work today, right? Or maybe mm. there's resentment. Uh, maybe there's jealousy. Maybe there's regret, right? We've got to deal with all of that stuff in our heart in order to get our heart right. And that's the first bullet is get your heart right, my friends. Because <laughs> you got to get your heart right before you can go do other stuff. Or, yeah. or you're just going to be dragging around baggage yeah. and it's going to be obvious. And if you're grieving, right? Um, that's going to, it's not that you shouldn't be grieving. I mean, if, if you do need to process grief, process grief. Process. But, um, you know, don't expect that while you're processing grief that you're going to show up to interviews your best <laughs> self. <laughs> you will not, my friends. Yeah, yeah. I so don't that's care not how reasonable. great a stage actor you think you might be. Yeah, that's not oh. reasonable. So, you know, be, be aware, right? You have some self-awareness and, uh, you know, give yourself time and space to, to process that grief. Your goal is to find humility, to find forgiveness, and, and to, to be ready for the next opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where we go next, right? That uh, what's your timeline? What's your urgency or, or what's your opportunity, right? How fast do you need or want to make this move? For me, I, I wanted to finish my master's program. I wanted to work on my book. I wanted to create some podcasts. I want to do some barn construction. <laughs> barn construction, sorry, Kip. Uh, uh, I, plumbed uh, no. for, I plumbed four sinks, I wired 25 outlets, I hung some windows. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that is just so impressive to me. I can't do any of the things you just listed off. None of it. I, I could maybe learn, but I YouTube right now, videos, I, don't, man. I don't know. <laughs> we are just falling into the pile of YouTube videos that I have used to learn other things. <laughs> and hopefully someday someone beyond the 17 listeners will actually appreciate what we have to offer here. Uh, 
So uh, I also had a lot of family time, right? Remember, we've got five kids at home. Uh, three of them are, are, are permanent children and two are foster children. And so those foster children, we don't know how much time we have with them. And mm. I really wanted to get some investment with them. I really wanted to build that connection. And that happened. That was one of the sweetest things in this time, right? It's great. Uh, I got to drive a lot of kids. We're in the middle of COVID-19, right? And so everybody's at home. It's it's pandemic stay at home, which is very different for a family of seven. I'm not going to lie. A family of seven does not quarantine the same way a family of one or two does. For sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, the timeline for me was a little longer than usual, but that's kind of kind of pandemic expected, right? Mm. Uh, for me, I've, I've had a lot of job transitions in my career, and that's just fine. That uh, that's That's part of the journey, right? Yeah. Uh, but in this case, uh, it was a little bit longer because of the pandemic, pandemic, but it was also a little longer because I had the opportunity to stretch it out and, and enjoy the journey. So I think that's I think that's great, Wes, because um, uh, because I had such a strong work ethic instilled um, when I was a kid, when I changed jobs for the for the first probably I'm thinking 10 first 20 years out of college. I would hardly have any uh, time between like I would stop one job on Friday and start the next job on Monday. I did that several times. Um, I just it just didn't feel comfortable to not start the new job. Um, and then uh, I got you know I got a little older, a little wiser. And in 2010, when I uh, switched jobs, I, I was to a point where I was like, how many weeks can I, you know, take off between these jobs? I wanted a sabbatical. Like I was so ready for nothing, just a whole lot of nothing. And fortunately it was in the middle of the summer, glorious Seattle summer. <laughs> and I just took weeks off. And what I, what I learned for the first time in my life is that it, it takes me two full weeks to relax, like to unwind from work. And it wasn't until the third week, and I, I took like six weeks, it wasn't until the third week that I, that I finally got to the place where I forgot what day it was. I had no idea, no idea. Was it Wednesday? Was it, was it Saturday? I couldn't tell. And I, like my shoulders were just relaxed. It was brilliant. Anyway, but um, yeah, so that, that, was, that was the last big job change you know, that, I, that I did and, uh, and how I handled it. And I look back on that and I'm really glad that's how I did it. It sounds like you were trying to get your head right. Yeah. And that, by the way, is the next topic. <laughs> Good. You got to get our head right. You got to you got to separate and frame your last job in your own head so that you can go forward with the next one. I have interviewed countless people who tell me I'm a nice, honest person. I've done good things and I can help you, too. And I think to myself, you should be a greeter at Walmart. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Don't sell me you're a nice guy. Who are you and what are you going to do? How are you going to world change? What are you, how are you going to make my world better? How are you yeah. going to turn this company? How are we going to be better because you were here? Yeah. Right? What problems That's are we going to solve together? To sell. Right. Right. Um, think about your, in, your, uh, in your transition, right? Is this just a horizontal transition? Uh, am I looking for the same job again tomorrow? Am I looking for a different job at the same level, but a, learn a different skill, right? Am I looking to make a jump for industry or, or geography, right? How many people do you know are, are uh, uh, I think there's a lot of news headlines right now about moving across the country, right? Mm -hmm. People moving from one state to another yeah. because of, of, of their experiences in the state they're from and the experiences they want to have in the state they go to. I know quite a few people that either have moved to Florida or are telling me like we're you know we're actively looking to you know relocate to some place that is more uh, warm, uh, more months of the year, more summer, more months of the year, or more sun. And uh, yeah, so I absolutely am seeing that. I have like five different friends that have moved, and not one of them gave me furniture. I'm very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> I call them friends, but you just never know. <laughs> All right, uh, which takes us to the next part of that, right? You are valuable. You are not allowed to uh, let, let the imposter syndrome sneak in here. Mm. <laughs> you are worth it. You delivered in your last job. You will deliver in your next job. And you are absolutely <clears throat> bringing value, even in the interview. I find sometimes I'm teaching something in the interview, and I'm wondering, mm. 
if they don't hire me, did I just give that away? And the answer mm -hmm. is yes, yes, I did. But but that's part of part of the the hiring journey, right? Is I'm going to trust you with some info, and you're going to trust me, and we'll see what where where we go from there. Yep, yep. And you know, leading with um, with serving, leading with generosity, that's good stuff. Well, and where is your help coming from, right? What is it going to look like? you have some healthy friends. And, and I'm not going to lie, in the middle of my journey, there were times when you'd find me curled up in a ball, rocking back and forth in a dark corner, right? <laughs> and during those times, my phone will ring because they can't come visit, right? But my phone will ring and it'll be one of, the, one of the folks that I've worked with in the recent past saying, hey, man, how you doing? Yay. And I have a choice at that point. I can tell them uh, I'm fine or I can tell them the truth. And, and that's a choice we all get to make, right? Uh, I didn't spend long in the corner, uh, but you visit it once in a while in your mind and it's time to, uh, to lean on the friends, the coworkers. Uh, having a spouse that supports you is, is phenomenal, right? And I, I'm lucky to be married to the, the best woman in the world. So uh, that, that puts me in a great spot. Oh man, we're gonna have to arm wrestle over that uh, title for, for my wife, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. great i'm glad for you uh, um and i had yeah. friends who rallied like you right uh you called me yeah. up and said hey wes where are you <laughs> how's your head <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah yeah definitely um boy there's so much uncertainty i mean being in between jobs is a gray zone and most of us don't do well living in the gray zone like we that's not where we want to be it's hard. And yet sometimes that ambiguity is where we find the biggest, the answers to the biggest questions. Sometimes. Which is where we go on the next topic. <laughs> no, isn't that exciting? You got to get your heart right. You got to get your head right. Now you got to get your soul right, my mm -hmm. friends. Right? If we believe that there's a God in heaven, if we believe that nature of that God is love and justice, and we believe that that God wants a personal relationship with us as described in the Bible, which I do. So uh, just know that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from then this is my opportunity to reconnect with that, that maker, that creator, and, and to find for myself, renew that relationship that maybe I neglected when I was working 12 hours a day. Right? Mm. Uh, and sometimes it's that God using, using this job transition to get my attention, right? Uh, and I will follow me for a second, right? If, okay. if God were trying to get your attention, there's a lot of ways to do it. He has levers, right? Um, he can, he can make you sick. He can, he can make your parents sick. He can, he can get, uh, get in your marriage and, and make marriage hard, right? He, God can use levers to cause us to look up and say, I need something more. I can't solve this problem myself, right? Um, and sometimes uh, when God really needs to get my attention, he pulls a lever of, of job, right? Mm. And honestly, I believe that's the cheapest lever he could possibly pull in my life to cause me to go back to the things that matter most to me and, and recenter, refocus, and really, uh, uh, really renew and refresh in those areas. And so uh, for me, a big part of the job search was a spiritual thing. So thank you for letting me uh, throw that out for you, friends. If you're still listening, uh, lots more good stuff to come. Hey, look, everybody's got, got their own faith, right? Whatever it is, even if you say, I don't have any faith, um, you know, that's fine. Like everyone's welcome here, man. Indeed, indeed. It's a, it's a good place to be. I will end with, I don't think God is interested in building great wealth. I don't think he's interested in fame or reputation. I don't think God is interested in our happiness or our comfort. I think he is interested in a sweet relationship with us. Mm. And, and, and this is how we can get to that, right? So, uh, okay. <laughs> and with that, uh, the next thing you got to do, you got to do your homework, friends. Mm. <laughs> got to do your homework. And so I found myself doing a, a lot of homework myself. I went to the professional resume writer and the mm. professional resume writer told me to do things differently than I was doing them. And I did not agree with her. Mm. She was right. Oh, <laughs> did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I, I... <laughs> Interesting. My oh, that's biggest very... recommendation there is uh, I have two recommendations in that resumes resume writing world. One is uh, do not wait for it to be perfect. Keep pushing it out even when it's not perfect. Don't apologize for it. It's your best resume. Get it out there. And then invest in yourself and invest in that resume. The, the, the value of a resume writer is, is worth their weight in gold for, for what they're doing for you. Argue with them a little, 
but don't argue with them a lot, right? <laughs> you know that rule, push twice and then give in? Uh, I'd say push once and give in in this case because oh. the, they do this professionally. They know what they're doing. Uh, trust them to package you in a way that's going to get you where you want to be. Boy, I have never used a professional uh, resume writer coach. And um, I think I would be skeptical too. I think I would, I think I would, I would probably have a similar reaction, right? If they were saying, well, you need to do this. And I'm like, I don't do think you know how many right. resumes I saw last year. I'm good. Yeah. But I wasn't good. But I wasn't good. And huh. it took it took some humility to get there, right? The, the other thing I did was I had a career coach, right? I had a coach who pulled me aside and said, let's prepare you for this thing. And I had four meetings with that career coach. And the first one was uh, happy-go-lucky friendly. And the second one was, uh, are we going to do something? And the third one, I said, I, re I need to rewrite this paragraph of my resume. And if we can rewrite that introductory paragraph, three sentences in this hour, it'll be worth the whole hour. Mm. We wrote three sentences in one hour. Wow. And those sentences are going to be at the top of my resume for the next 10 years. So it was absolutely worth the hour. Um, set goals for that time and use that time specifically for moving the ball down the field. So let me ask you a question, if I may. Um, you got professionals on your team for this transition. I've never done that. What, what was it that caused you to say that that was what you needed to do? Um, was that the first time you've ever done it or had you done it before? And I mean, tell me just a little bit more about, you know, what, <laughs> what, went, what went on in, in your head that made you feel like that was that you needed to bring those people in? It was part of the package deal for the layoff, right? So that's how oh. I brought them in. So I didn't actually out of pocket them. Okay. Uh, but uh, so it. they were available as part of the package. But, 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 you, uh, but you still had the choice not to use them. Nobody said you had to. And if you've got aces on your team who want to help you, why would we not take yeah, it? Yeah, but that first that? one you thought was a deuce. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out to be an excellent value, right? Uh, I'm, I'm glad. glad I did. I'm so, glad. That's good. Okay. Uh, so I really wanted a smaller company with a bigger span of control. That's where I was headed, right? I've been at Fortune 100 companies for most of my career, uh, influencing at the, at the big level with a, a small to medium-sized job. And I really wanted to go with the bigger job at the smaller company. And, and I needed to figure out how to do that, how to speak that language and how to be prepared uh, for my transition, right? That was my stated goal objective. Okay. And I remember uh, you looked at me and said, yeah, you could do it. But that's because you're an encourager and a cheerleader and not necessarily because you gave me logical sound oh, advice. Oh, man. Uh, God bless you, Kip. I love but you. I, but I wasn't off, though, right? <laughs> that's what that's what we're going to find out at the end of the episode that's... is I was not off. You can't tell us the end of the story. <laughs> I, I teased it. I didn't tell you. <laughs> All right. So now we're getting to the big stuff, right? You got to use your resources, right? You have a long network of people who love you, and I do, and I, I think you do too, and you may not remember it, and you may not know it, and you may not realize you're looking in the right places for it. You just forgot, right? That, that prodigy kid that you mentored four years ago is a director somewhere now, Yeah. right? Call them. Yeah. You help that person in their career, and they know it, but you forgot, uh, so it's time to do do that reconnection, right? And then go to coffee with as many people as you can. Uh, if you're sitting outside in the middle of winter in the rain, drinking coffee without a chair because it's not allowed in your state, you're doing it right. Do that. Oh, man. And you're, and then and you're bonding. It. You're bonding. Well, <laughs> well, and then you help others every chance you get, right? Uh, the more you're helping others, the more it's going to come back to you because uh, it just does. It just does. So. Um, I would say, uh, something I learned from Neil Wills, and I'm going to call him out here. Uh, uh, he built a, a roadmap of what, where he's at in his job search. And he had four different columns based where he's at in the interview life cycle, the product life cycle for each of his interview, uh, uh opportunities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he was, he had three companies, this one and six companies in this column and two companies here. And, and he could, he could then share that with me. And I could see how much progress he, or what companies he's actively looking at. Mm. When he's openly specific about what he's pursuing, I can openly help him get to the next level. I can now offer him, 
uh, here's my contact at that company. Let me do an introduction for you. Yeah. How many times, ask, if I had a nickel for every time somebody said, uh, uh, my, my network's open to you, let me know who I can contact for you. And yet I didn't take them up on most of those. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If you're listening now, it's because you're one of the 17 people listening that uh, also <laughs> offered that. And I appreciate it. I'm sorry I didn't take advantage of it. Um, and, and if I could learn something from Neil, it would be draw up your roadmap and, and give people a visual that says, this is where I'm going. Can you help me with any of these steps? Yeah. Now, so. now you, you did kind of skim over something that I just want to acknowledge, which is you were able to pin for yourself a destination. You knew where you wanted to go. You knew where you were. You knew, you knew where you wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And once you had that destination in mind, well, now, now it becomes almost like a Google map exercise, right? Uh, it's not quite that easy, but you know, I mean, but there's probably a lot of people listening, watching this episode and they're like, yeah, well, I don't know exactly what job I want. So, um, you know, so that could be a big blocker for them. And I just want to say that if you don't know the job that you want, you know, do that homework, pick something that you think is right, go for it. You can always change, right? But you've got to get moving. You've got to get some momentum. You've got to discover whether that job that you picked based on the homework is really, truly good for you. You may start unpacking it and realize, oh, this is actually a lot more than I thought and I don't really like the more that I'm finding. Okay, great. Roll to roll to the second choice that you that you that you came up with, or make a second choice. The point is, get some momentum, get going. Don't worry about. I'm not so sure if this is if this is the one. You can change your mind if you find out it's not the one. Get moving. So I'm hearing energy creates energy, and momentum creates momentum. I think so, and people can sense that too, right? If you're on a mission, people like that. People like people who are on a mission. That sense of purpose is wonderful. Indeed. So I had several opportunities along the way, and we should touch on those for just a second, because right. we've talked about uh, you don't have a job and it's not your fault. Uh, let's talk about that, right? I had a Fortune, Fortune 50 company uh, local to me here who uh, uh, had a director of security architecture position open. And, and I have three friends who are directors in that department. I'm thinking, this is mine. It's, it's a walk-in, right? Seems like it, yeah. It wasn't in my target uh, for what I was looking for, but it's, it's, it's a walk-in. Let's go take advantage of that. Uh, in this case, um, the, they hired a new CISO. The new CISO wanted his own deputy in that chair, and the chair closed before it was opened. And I'm glad uh, I want that company to be successful, but... But I had my eyes set on that, and that one, that one, uh, evaporated in front of me. Right? Yeah. And so, bugger. Let's go back and 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 work on that next opportunity, right? Or hopefully, we have a pipeline of eight or ten in flight, and we can work on that next opportunity. I love that you said pipeline because that uh, brings up the point that you are selling, right? You're selling what you can do. You're selling your ability to solve problems. You absolutely. And selling is a numbers game. As much as it is anything else, you need a pipeline. So if you're out there searching for jobs, you better have a pipeline. Uh, and, and another way to think of it is a funnel, right? You need to have a lot of opportunities coming into the big part of the funnel. As they trickle down through that, you know, then you're going to you know, only be left with a percentage of what came into the top. And you better have more than one. So then I had a growth company. It's square in my target market. They want uh, their first manager of security, and they want to grow the security program around it. They're very excited. It's a high-tech company. It's related to the telecom space that I've been in. I got through the fourth interview. At the fourth interview, uh, a side question at the end of the interview from the as-needed person was, so what do you know about GDPR? That was not something in the job description. It was, was not something we were looking for. That was a left hook. <laughs> I got left behind because I didn't do GDPR. The person uh. who was hired two weeks later had the GDPR experience. And I know because I have a friend who's on the inside who was adv advocating and navigating me through the, the process, right? Uh, not complaining, not sad, just, just glad they found the right person. And sure burned a lot of time going through four rounds of interviews yeah. to, for them to discover they had the wrong job description. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. 
the boy interviewing candidates is a learning process for the for the employer isn't it isn't i mean that true you absolutely go through candidates and they reveal to you things you did not think about when you wrote that jd and <laughs> so yeah i mean isn't that true boy that that absolutely can happen did, did you feel like those four interviews were wasteful of your time or did you take something away from it as well I didn't really, I didn't really appreciate the, mm. the wasteful of the time. It, it did not feel, uh, they didn't have a security leader and they were bringing in uh, a deputy. They were literally first foray into security and, and apparently into privacy as well. <laughs> they, they were not in a space. Um, I will say I didn't answer the GDPR question as well as I could have, cause I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And those who are listening, who know me are probably going to send me hate mail for having failed at that step. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Well, I think uh, I think that's something else that I'll just touch on for a moment is that there's a lot of a lot of talk right now about converging cybersecurity, information security with privacy, and I, I'm not a fan of that at all. I I I don't think that's a good idea um, because privacy is a is really I I believe a business decision, right? What data are we going to collect now? The, whole, the decision about how we're going to protect the data that we do collect, okay, great, that's, that's information security, that's cybersecurity. Um, how will we use the data that we collect? So if we're going to collect somebody's personal information, and we told them when we collected it, we're going to use it for this purpose, but then later on somebody decides they're going to use it for this other purpose that wasn't disclosed when it was collected, cybersecurity can't do anything about that. <laughs> we, have, we have no voice in that. Notification and consent are critical in that. You're right. Um, but anyway. I think that the biggest business case for security is privacy, right? I think you can, uh, if I need a new tool, my best bet is to go tell the privacy guys that I want to protect their data with my new tool and I I'm going to get the cash. <laughs> I won't argue that. I won't argue that. I just, I'm just not sure that, that, that melding those two together as a function in the, in the organization or in the enterprise is necessarily a good idea because I think it's going to create a gap. Business people are going to think that the privacy team is taking care of it. The privacy team is going to be like, what are they doing with that data? We don't know because they never talk to us. I just don't think it's a recipe for success. End of rant. Let's keep well, going. Let, I'm going to pick it up one more time because this is fun, right? I, I was at a company where the definition of risk was, is it customer data on the internet? And if it's customer data and internet, that was the intersection of, of impact and likelihood that drove the risk score through the roof. Okay. And so uh, you want a risk score? Is it customer data on the internet? Great. There you go. Here's your score. <laughs> oh, that's a whole other episode. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So uh, then I went to another company. This was an infrastructure company. I, uh, they were looking for their first security engineer. But a headhunter grabbed me and said, hey, Wes, you need to go in for this. I said, I'm not your engineer. I've been an engineer. I've been an engineering manager. But I'm not looking for an engineer job. I'm looking for a CISO job, right? Mm. And the, the answer came back to me, uh, well, we should talk to them anyway. And I did. And I convinced them that they, uh, they definitely had a, a CISO caliber candidate in front of them. And a security engineer is what they were hoping to fill. Mm. After the third interview, they uh, – and I knew – I knew going into this that this was going to be an upsell opportunity, right? I knew that going in. They said, uh, no hire, not enough of an engineer, more of a, a paper pusher. Mm. And then a week later, they called me back and changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> they learned something. <laughs> uh, they did, right? They learned maybe we need two positions. We need a leader and we need a, a follower, right? Mm. Somebody to push and paper, somebody to push bits. And I met with the CTO and then I sat down with the, the COO and, and I finished that, that interview with the COO, the chief operating officer of this national infrastructure company. And he's coaching me on, he, he goes, uh, you need to meet with our CEO in order to really have the backing you would need in order to come into this role and deliver the way you want to. And then he spent 10 minutes coaching me on how to be ready for that person's interview at that level with the CEO. It huh. was phenomenal. It was a tremendous experience for mentoring me on how to prepare for being successful for his boss. Wow. Well, he must have, he must have really had a lot of confidence in you. He must have gone back and said, this guy needs to be in tomorrow. Yeah. I haven't heard from that company in three months. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what they're doing. <laughs> that's God the biggest. Bless them. That's Good luck the, to you guys. That's the biggest ghost ever. <laughs> 
Well, and and probably what's going on there is they just they they went back to the bank and they said, wait, we don't have the pockets uh, to uh, be able to support what we want to do here. There's no value in trying to go forward. And 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 so I'm glad I could help them learn that. So then the fourth opportunity kind of snuck up on me. This was a headhunter grabbing me on the East Coast who said, hey, uh, you would be a great opportunity for uh, uh, healthcare industry. I said, really? And uh, and. Uh, he got me in to start talking and, and uh, the boxes were checked and we kept going. Um, I was on uh, 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 in, in Texas with the family over, over New Year's doing an interview from the upstairs back bedroom of my in-laws house mm -hmm. because that was what was available at the time. Right. <laughs> um, I had an offer while, uh, while I was in Texas at the in-laws, which is always a good thing. Um, if you're going to be at your in-laws unemployed, it's great to leave <laughs> with an offer. Let's just say your stock went up. <laughs> I'm working as a car salesman at my father-in-law's car dealership. No, that's not true. I am a, uh, it, it does feel good to, to, to have that kind of opportunity happen in, in, uh, in that kind of space. So that's great. Uh, I started a couple of weeks later and I'm, I'm loving it. It is uh, uh, I came from a security engineering role most recently, and I'm stepping into more of a, a security governance risk compliance, and then broader into the full security org. And so uh, I'm having a lot of fun. Good. Okay. I'm glad you landed. I'm glad you landed after that. Uh, that was a long journey for you, right? Um, <laughs> several months. So, so congrats. let's 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 leave you with this, right? Uh, thank you. It was a, a journey. It was a good one, and thank you for being my friend on the journey. You bet. Um, you all need one, right? This is uh, unemployment is a team sport. <laughs> <laughs> is that is, uh, job searching is a team sport? Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, that I can get Let's behind. Let's do that one. No problem. <laughs> so, folks, uh, you got to stay on task. You're not allowed to go work on the barn every every day just because it's easier. Stay on task. Uh, you can still read to your kids at night, but during the day, you gotta you gotta make time and make the space in order to yeah. go find find your next great opportunity. Yeah, I, I I say your your job is to find a job, and double down. You need to be working hard at that, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and the one of the ways to measure that is to do three job things a day, right? Mm. Accomplish three things a day. If you do three things a day, five days a week, you're going to be back at work sooner than you know it. Uh, okay. And so then if I look at the zip recruiter email that popped into my inbox that morning, doesn't that's count. That's only, it doesn't count. It's not even one doesn't thing. Doesn't count. <laughs> oh, dang. Looking at an email <laughs> does not count. All you right. must create, build, deliver, or interact in some appropriate way that Gosh. moves you forward down the field. Man. All right. Set the bar uh, high, why don't you? It feels like the field is forever, but it's only a hundred yards. And at some point <laughs> you will find the end zone, right? Yep. You just don't know where you're at on the field. So you don't know if today's your touchdown, yeah. right? Stadium lights are off. The fog's rolled in. You just got to keep running. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Take me back to Slippery Rock at South Kitsap. All right. Uh, uh, the next thing is take your holidays off. Take your weekends <clears throat> off. If you're going to work hard, you better play hard. And you need to play hard because you better work hard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If your job is to find a job, then you deserve a weekend of no work. And then I leave you with this. We, we make our plans, but the Lord directs our steps. And uh, that has been true for me. And that's how I managed uh, the anxiety and the stress, uh, the excitement and the enthusiasm of this transition. Uh, make your plans, set them before the Lord, and, and he will uh, direct your paths. Wow. That was some amazing insight. Uh, fresh insight. So thank you so much. <laughs> what for, a fun time. Thanks for, Kip. for being willing to share this, uh, you know, so soon after your, uh, your journey came to an end. Really appreciate it. And I hope, I hope everybody listening uh, got at least one really good thing from, from listening to Wes's journey. Yeah. If you got more than one thing, then wow. I, I, then I, gosh, your time here has been well spent, I think. So <laughs> Let's wrap it up. I just want to say a couple of things about uh, what you could do next to get your dream cybersecurity yes. job. You know, we've got a free guide that we put together and it's called Play to Win, Getting Your Dream Cybersecurity Job. And it describes how, if you've ever played Capture the Flag, whether that's uh, in the woods, in the dirt, the way I did when I was a kid, 
or digitally, right, in some kind of a cyber range or something like that on the on the internet, whichever, however you did that, if you've done that, then you can take that approach, that mindset, and you can use it to compete and win in your job hunting. So it's a, it's a helpful 20 page visual guide. And all you have to do is go to the following URL, yourcyberpath.com forward slash PDF. I'll just say it one more time, yourcyberpath.com forward slash PDF. Grab a copy for yourself, take a look at it. Let us know what you think. If it's helpful, I wanna hear from you. If it's the worst thing you've ever seen, or just meh, I don't care. Let me know, right? Send me a message. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. And um, and at this point, I just want to say you're one path away from your dream cybersecurity job. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Wes. Good times. Bye, Al.